Hello everyone, my name is Alex Akimov and today I will be talking about APIs and how to make them better. To achieve this, we need to have a good API first strategy and I will compare how different the strategy can be in startups versus enterprises. So today I would really like to make sure that you spend the next 30 minutes both enjoying the story and learning something tangible that you can apply in your day-to-day -day work. We will have five main parts. First of all, my short introduction so that you know why I'm here today speaking about this topic. Then we will discuss some examples of how enterprises are different from startups and how this might change our approach to the API strategy. And after that, we will dive into the definitions of API first and API strategy and where to start with them. Then we will look into more specific use cases of API strategy elements. And lastly, we can draw some high level conclusions on how to apply all this. So a few words about my background. I am based in the Netherlands, have quite a busy life besides my job, but of course love everything related to APIs. APIs is something I've been dealing with for quite some time. And for about six years, I was working for Adyen, the famous payment service provider based in Amsterdam and operating globally. And for two years, I was responsible for Adyen's API strategy as a head of API. And about a year and a half ago, I decided to make a drastic change and move to a small Berlin-based startup, Monite, where currently I am in charge of creating an API platform building embedded finance APIs for invoice management, cash flow optimization, and other financial products. Monite is the API first company, and we build our entire go-to-market product strategy around our APIs. So you can imagine for the last year and a half, I kept comparing how similar and different it can be to build an API platform in a big established organization like Adi versus a young and small startup like Monite. This is a topic I discussed a lot with my current and former colleagues, with my network and other API practitioners. Obviously, there is no single view on this dilemma and no silver bullet that can solve all the problems, but there are definitely some patterns and I want to dive into them. Okay, uh, let's look into these patterns. First of all, what do you imagine every time when someone says an enterprise? Most likely it's a big building full of people who are busy with working on the scope that is very narrow and very specialized, holding a big amount of money. And this enterprise is being visible from all over the world. Sound quite right. And when we talk about a startup, many of us imagine a small garage where a lot of startups originated from. So in many senses, it's all about the size, the amount of employees, the amount of clients, the amount of legacy, and the amount of API. At the same time, it's also about the maturity. An enterprise here is like a grown up organism developed in a unique and sophisticated way truly believing that they know how life works and how they should navigate in it to be successful. They survived in fighting with their competition and this gives them everything they have by now. And the startup is a newcomer to this world. Even if built by experienced people, very often it's still a young and immature organization, which is only in the beginning of their journey. At the same time, it's more lively, more playful, and not afraid of experimenting to explore the world. Now, when someone is describing their experience of being in a startup, most of the answers are related to the speed. You can try things much faster. You move really fast. You win fast and you fail fast. And the enterprise is like a big truck loaded with a lot of stuff moving slowly and with a big inertia, very difficult to turn to a new path and explore new opportunities. However, the ability to carry a lot of things is also an enterprise's advantage. An enterprise usually has much more resources to try new opportunities 
while a startup always has a limited amount of time, constantly focusing on the build rate, on the fuel, and looking for the perfect product market fit. And then what many people, especially engineers, don't like about the enterprises is their legacy. It is related to the amount of code, to the amount of clients, to some decisions from the past. And all this you have to maintain, and this can be really enormous. For me, a good analogy here is rolling a snowball. The more you roll it, the more snow it picks up, and then the more difficult it is for you to roll and control it. It is also known as the snowball effect. Look at this guy on the left. He's definitely tired and struggling. And this kid on the right, they're not only able to roll it easily, but they definitely are excited and they're definitely having fun. This is very typical for is institutionalization or the ability or resistance to a change. A very good visualization here is of this pattern is the way how you can paint a masterpiece. In the beginning, in a startup, only a few strokes have been made, and you can still change the lines, you can st still pick different colors, or maybe adjust the light, and etc. At an enterprise, you already have a very solid and maybe very beautiful picture with its own character, which is nice, but difficult to change if you would like to. I cannot imagine you put more strokes on, on this Mona Lisa portrait. And then at the startup, you still have this freedom with maybe many strokes, you can still transform an original picture into something pretty different, but still with the same foundational structure. All right, now let's come back to our favorite topic, APIs, and talk a little bit more about API strategy and API first principles. So first, uh, let's talk about API first. I believe that most, the most important point here is that still many professionals and a lot of organizations put a bit different meaning into what API first is. This is a striking example from the Postman State of the API report two years ago, which shows the diversity of views on API first principles. So if you are in a startup and you are building an API, are you automatically becoming an API first? Or vice versa, if you're in a traditional bank and now you're undergoing digital transformation to expose your products to your partners via APIs, can you be considered as API first at some point or you will be always API second? I guess the answer here is not how you were doing this in the past, but rather how you're building your product right now. If you're prioritizing APIs over applications, if you put extra emphasis on good API design and excellent developer experience of your APIs, if you see your go-to-market product strategy with APIs, then you are definitely API first in one flavor or another. And it doesn't matter whether you're building an API from scratch or have to transform a big legacy platform, whether you treat your API as a product or more as a set of technical means to expand your product market exposure, or whether you have a dedicated role as an API product manager or head of API, or you are somebody else in your organization who really cares about the quality of your API. One thing is always common. You cannot achieve high quality of your API in just a single day. It is always a sequence of steps. It is a mindset and company culture. It's big and small activities here and there. And you need an API strategy to achieve that. And in fact, it doesn't matter that much if you have the strategy explicitly written down somewhere, or it is simply a solid trajectory that you and your organization follows, but it is important that you apply this in the right way, depending on the needs and specifics and the size of your organization. So now we have more or less some good understanding of API first, API strategy, and different patterns that help us compare startups with enterprises. Uh, let's dive into more specific examples of different elements of an API strategy and what you can have there. The first one is API as a product. 
In my opinion, it is one of the fundamental decisions of your API strategy is whether you want and can treat your API as a product. API as a product is a key is a set of key principles and practices that emerged recently with a growing number of API driven companies. So if you're in a startup and you're somehow involved into creating an API strategy, then it is a no brainer for you. The best thing you can do is to start productizing your API from day one. In an enterprise environment, it is much more complicated. Basically, if you're already in an organization that is visibly led by product, then making API as a product would be relatively easy and well perceived. Otherwise, you might just end up fighting windmills and probably it is better that you spend your time and energy on something else, which can lead you to the same result, good API, without officially enforcing the API as a product concept. The next use case, the next element of your API strategy is API documentation. It is our favorite here because we are the API the docs after all. In a startup, every person wears multiple hats, which also means that it is expected almost from everybody to contribute to the documentation too. However, in practice, this means that good public documentation is always an afterthought because everybody is wearing multiple hats and they don't have just time or priority for working on the API documentation. And as a result of this deprioritization, it quickly becomes neglected and outdated. So even in a small startup, I always recommend to start with the technical writing team who owns the API documentation and also knows how to do this at the professional level. However, this team is usually quite small to serve or should be able to serve. Then the more you grow as an organization, the closer you are to the size of an enterprise, the more logical it would be for you to have technical writers distributed and embedded into multiple teams. And still you need to have a core group of people setting up the guidelines and maintaining the overall quality and the so-called federated approach. And if we talk about the federated approach, it also makes sense to discuss API management or in broader terms, API governance. In my experience, the approach here is similar to the previous one, API documentation. We need to analyze the size of the organization and how well all the processes and structures are defined or ready to be adjusted. And if you operate in a small startup, it makes sense to start with a dedicated person who really owns the responsibility of good API design who can handle API management uh, tasks and exposure of APIs to the clients, and who can do the required research and serve as an API expert for all the other colleagues. Over time, it is always useful to spread this knowledge and form a group of people with extended expertise in API design and API governance. Quite often, this group is known under the name of API console or API board. Uh, this helps to successfully distribute the knowledge and governance and can be perfect for enterprise size of organizations. And if you have never seen an API console, this is how it usually feels like to be part of it. Look at this person sitting backwards. It's like somebody brought the API change for re review, expecting to receive friendly and supportive feedback. And um, yeah, this is also when we discuss one of the most existential topics of any API design, like best practices of API versioning and breaking changes. You can see it's a big crowd, very heated discussions. And I'm usually this guy that everybody hates and wants to kill at the end of the episode. Okay, jokes aside, by the way, we just touched on a very important topic, breaking changes. No API is perfect from the beginning. Every API can be improved but you need to have some important techniques in place. And the sooner you introduce them, the better. Usually you have to decide how you want to version your APIs. Should it be in a URL and headers or somehow else? You need to uh, define what you consider to be a breaking change. And then you need to share all this with your API clients as early as possible so that you have common understanding of breaking changes. The main advantage of being in a startup is that you don't have a lot of legacy. Remember that snowball. 
so you can roll it fast and perhaps you can still break some things. While in the case of an enterprise, you have to be super careful, explore everything you have and carefully introduce new changes. And exactly for the same reasons, when you're working in a startup, you don't have a massive opportunity to make things perfect. I've seen many examples, including myself, when startup folks invent some very complicated technical solutions, often over-engineer, and as a result, they grant, greatly increase the complexity and decrease the speed. And then they run out of time and money. In a startup, you always have to play pragmatic and make choices that give you the fastest way to the market. At an enterprise, you can actually do the same to quickly launch the products and be first to the market. Adyen, for example, sees this principle as part of the company formula. You can find it on their website. Uh, however, it is still more typical for enterprises to carefully explore every new uh, step and move there only when they're completely certain what to do next. So the next one is about technology architecture and organization structure. Some people might say that the system architecture as well as the org design have nothing to do with your API strategy. However, I usually tend to disagree and here is the reason why. Uh, this statement is known as a converse law and there are a lot of examples how it affects your, your technical product and your API as well. In simple words, it means that the way you design your teams and the ways how these teams communicate to each other greatly affects the resulting product. And here are some examples illustrating the Conway's law, uh, where you can see various famous organizations, how they operate internally, and this clearly affects the way the products are built and brought to the market. So luckily, there is a known solution to this problem, which is called an inverse Conway's law, inverse, inverse Conway's maneuver for it. In simple words, it means that, um, yeah, if you want your product to build in a certain way, you can influence this by changing your communication and org structures internally. And uh, for example, if you have 22 teams creating different uh, parts of your API, if these teams don't talk to each other well, then you have 22 different services and somebody who will be using your API from the outside, for them, it will be very difficult to understand how this all can complement each other. Things like API governance and API console can improve and harmonize uh, the communication internally to make sure there are certain reviews in place, certain best practices, and this will also help you create a single API uh, export to the outside world. What it means in practice? In a startup, just use every opportunity to learn about your system architecture and org structure and try to influence it if you see the value for your API strategy and API design. In an enterprise organization, it is much harder to influence what was already built, but at least you need to be aware of it, reflect on your API strategy, and see if you can still apply the inverse converse maneuver to achieve some of your goals. And of course, no organization can be successful without the right API culture and mindset. That's why you really need to spend time on becoming an ambassador of good API design, on sharing your knowledge, on finding allies on building trust and fostering this API-focused product and engineering culture. So here are some high-level conclusions. First of all, try to come up with some patterns and some techniques that help you understand your organization and your colleagues better and see if these are the principles and best practices, uh, how they arise from these patterns and how you can apply this into building your API strategy. What are the commonalities and what are the differences? Second, when being in a startup, you have much more influence to set up things right from the very beginning. But please remember, uh, always try to avoid complex solutions. Always focus on moving fast and always try to choose what you can do yourself versus relying on a big crowd of people around you. At an enterprise, it is much more about discovering the scope and uh, knowing the unknowns. You need to carefully wait every your next step and find the most efficient ways how to build a resilient API-focused strategy without breaking existing clients' integrations. 
And also one point really stands out in the enterprises when we talk about the tech and product is the tech debt, the legacy. Use any opportunity to remove this legacy. This will really help you to move fast and to regain the speed that is usually affordable only at startups. And then both talk about APIs, enable, find the lives and ambassadors. Remember that API doesn't end only with good API design, it's uh, also developer experience, API documentation, all the integration resources. Just make sure that everybody understands that everybody supports that. And this is also part of your API strategy. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed my talk and found something useful. Please reach out to me on LinkedIn. And as a bonus, if you want to see the API strategy, I'm working on it one night. It's open source and published on GitHub. This is the link here. Thank you. Until next time.